Hello people, welcome back to the channel, Nigel here with you and today, I think this is part 14 now isn't it, of this um, beginner series for uh, taking, your, taking your, your hobby one step further and today I'm going to look at one of the fundamental issues that um, really seem to bother a lot of people I'll start by apologising for the state of my hands, one I've got a cut um, well, no, it's a blister. Uh, don't ask me how I got it. Um, <laughs> uh, and I've got paint all over my hands and disgusting fingernails, but I've got paint all over my hands. I've been working on about two other projects this morning. So um, I just thought I'd do this video quickly just to show you uh, something that everybody seems to be, or a lot of people seem to be scared of. And that is these gun barrels. Now, you see a lot of people do reviews on tank kits or stuff and they'll, you know, they'll do written reviews in forums or they'll do reviews in magazines or they'll talk about it on YouTube, whatever. And they're like, oh no, it hasn't got metal barrels. Well, this kit has. This is the um, Scharnhorst turret B I reviewed a little while ago. Um, can someone tell me as well in the comments, it says Battleship Scharnhorst. And if I loan the stuff online, that says Battleship Sharnhurst, but I also see her called Battlecruiser. So if you can let me know what she actually is, because you never believe any, everything you read anywhere, can you? But you can see here it says plus bonus metal barrels. So that will make a lot of people buy it. And here we have there's three of them in the kit. There's three metal gun barrels, okay, and here are three plastic gun barrels. And as you can see, they come in halves, so you have to stick them together and get rid of the seam. And it seems a lot of people are not scared of it, but they just see it as a real sort of annoying task they'd rather not do. So they'll go out and spend another few pounds on a metal gun barrel just to avoid having to do that. And I often wonder why. I just don't get it. I mean, here is a... This is something else I'm working on off camera. This is an Iowa... Well, it's actually Missouri, but I'm going to turn it into Iowa gun turret just by the just by changing the paint, I think. But you can see these are glued together. Now, I had a bit of an issue with these because, I, in my opinion, I could be wrong, but in my opinion, instead of these gun barrels being round like this, going together, they're more like that, because even after you glue them together, you still get this, this high spot. But we're getting there, and I've got some black primer on there now, so I can gently sand those, and we'll see where the high spots are. But I'll show you how to do that when we come to do these. So what we're going to do is looking at, look at actually assembling a gun barrel. So if we look here, we'll get these parts off the sprue. So we'll start by getting the parts off the sprue. Don't ever cut right up to the part. Okay, always lay off the part a bit. Unless you've got like brand new god hands or something, I wouldn't ever recommend cutting right up to the part. Cut slightly away from it and leave a bit of a nib on there, especially when you've got sprue gates, sprue nibs, sprue connection points, sprue whatever. Especially when you've got them like this, because you can see these are actually on the surface. They don't go onto the edge of the part, they're on the surface, which is great, because that means that we don't have to sand away anything on the edge. So now you can come in with your cutters, and because you only have a small amount of plastic to remove, you can come along, you can see this is how a normal sprue gate is. It goes onto the edge of the part. This, this type of sprue gate here, as you can see, is going onto the surface. So this one leaves the surface flush, and this one is on the surface. So we just remove those, just like so. The one on the back doesn't really matter because it's not going to be seen. But Okay, so now what we've got to do is get rid of that raised edge on there. So a couple of ways you can do this. You can use sanding sticks. I prefer to use glass files. Where are my glass files? Here I am, Mr. Prepared as usual. So I've got these, these Infini clear files, and they're just a clear glass file. Um, some people say you can get them from like beauticians and stuff, but I've, I've never seen them, but... I don't go in beauticians, as you can tell, because I'm not beautiful. But um, we can just remove these sprue nibs. And the beauty of these glass files is that they don't, as you can see, I rub on the surface here, and they don't tend to remove a load of material. They only remove the raised bits. Like if I go on the end here, where it doesn't matter, this one's actually more raised, isn't it? Yeah. 
you can see on here we've got a raised nib on there and when I rub it with the glass file it's not touching anything other than the raised bit and then when we get down to the surrounding material it just polishes it it doesn't tend to take anything off as you can see so these are really good for removing sprue nibs when you only want to remove the sprue nib as you can hear they kind of cut away and then and then it just becomes like a okay and then that little bit that's left what you find you can fold it over and just sand it off that little bit that's left sticking out there look fold it over sand it off now this won't always apply I wish I had some other parts here um, I wish I had I don't have I wish I had some other parts here that had normal type sprue gates that were on the outside edge so what you would do, what I would normally do there I think you've seen me do it before like if you, when you watch the hurricane build which you haven't seen yet you um well, probably haven't seen you I'm not sure what order these videos are going out in but um what I would normally do is just leave the sprue nib there on the on the outside edge but make sure the mating faces are flat so we've got our mating faces nice and flat that's the main thing get rid of any marks any undulations or whatever and I mean if you want to use a sanding stick you can but it's just be very very gentle with it and don't go leaving great big gouges in it so you can see I can go over the sanding stick absolutely fine just as you would normally There we go. I'm just looking at this actually. These are the gun barrels for Scharnhorst in 70 second scale. These are the gun barrels for Missouri in 70 second scale. Um, yeah. <laughs> hmm. Right, so, and you've already seen me do the 170 second scale Yamato. So. So then the next thing to do, we've got them nice and flat, we're going to check the fit. So we're going to put these together. As you can see, what they've done here, rather than make different parts, what they've done, the parts are absolutely the same. And what they've done, if I can grab something pointy, you can see we have a, a semicircular cutout in there and there, rather than have the great big lump with the hole in it. And what that does, that stops sink marks, which is nice. But it also means they can just make six parts the same to make three barrels. So what we're going to do, we're going to turn these over and put these together. Just to hold them, I'm going to grab a clothes peg just to hold one end together, just like so. And what I'm going to do is see what they feel like. Because sometimes you will find that the pins will actually force you, will force misalignment. It all seems to be okay, so we'll leave the pins on there. If there was any doubt whatsoever, I would just cut the pins off and then just have them going together with no pins at all. Okay, so we've got our two parts off. I'm looking here and I can see that I, we have a little bit of a bow in it, which is going to help us greatly, as you will see in a minute. Yeah, I think I'm thinking I think there's a bit of a sprue nib left in there. There's a little bit of a sprue nib left on there, so we're just going to sand that off. If there's a tiny little bit there, it doesn't really matter because the, if you're using liquid cement, it's going to melt it away anyway. What I'm doing, I'm just checking that I can get it all nice and flush, and I can. Now, the one thing you have to be careful of with you, because you don't have a pin and a hole, you only have a semicircle, as you can see, it's easy to to push them out of line. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to start at the back end and I'm going to glue these together. So I'm going to grab my Tamiya Extra Thin. I'm going to get armed with some clothes pegs. Ready. And I'm going to get armed with a pair of tweezers. You're probably wondering why I need tweezers all will become apparent. So I can hold this together and I can make sure that everything lines up. And I can take a drop of extra thin and just place it in that seam. OK, 
okay and there we go so we hold that back end together and as you can see the front end is coming apart and that is going to really really help us now what the tweezers are for if you pinch like here if to, to show you what i'm doing i'm pinching across the seam to make sure that everything lines up we don't want to glue it together like that we want it to glue together like this not like that so we get the back end sorted and then we can use a fingernail what what little bit of a fingernail i've got and just feel to feel there's a step and the step is the same either way okay that i'll, I'll do more of that in a second so i can put some extra thin in here and you can see now how this gap it's going to help us because it gives us a gap to put the glue in and the glue will capillary along that joint. As you can see, you can see the glue is oozing out along that joint. And there we go, just let it tack off. And I'm going to grab my tweezers and just squeeze, make sure everything's nice and level. Let the glue tack off and then with your fingernail just feel do we have a step don't we step equal either way that's good so now once again we can come up to here make sure we've got some glue on the brush come up to here and the glue will capillary along when i squeeze this together you will see the glue will ooze out And then I'm going to come along to here. As you can see, the glue is oozing out. And then I'm going to come along and finish it off. So I can put some cement in there. Just tap that together. And put some cement in there. Tap that together. And then just for safety, you can see this on the end here. This is what you want to avoid. See how those are glued together? We want them to be like that, round. So now we can just put some cement inside there. And if you notice, I'm keeping my fingers away from the seams because otherwise the glue will capillary under my fingers and make a right old mess so now I can use my tweezers again to pinch across the joint and just to show you what I'm doing I'll move this out of line so you can see now on the end of there it's misaligned yeah what I'm doing is this see with the tweezers I can make it come back into line all right, so once you've got it all that and the glue's all starting to gel off and everything and everything's getting glued together, we can just come along with a finger now. You see, I can feel there there's quite a step that way, but there's nothing really that way. So that means that this side needs to go down. You can use, you don't have to use your finger now, you can use a cocktail stick if you're worried about getting glue on your fingers. But you can see there, if I go that way, it's smooth. If I go that way, it catches. So I can come on with my tweezers. And this is the thing, while the glue's still wet, you want to get this lined up as well as you can. Because the time spent now will save you, not hours, but many, many minutes of filling and sanding and waiting for filler to dry and stuff. And if you get this perfect, you could get this so you don't need any filler or anything whatsoever. You'll just be able to sand this joint and that'll be it. So again, smooth that way, step that way. So we're going to push that side down. And then we've got equal both sides. Check the other side. Sometimes you will get like one side smaller than the other. So what you need to do is equal that about. Make sure... You don't, you don't want to glue, if you've got one side small and one side big, you don't want to do that. You want to glue it like that and then you can sand the other one to blend or fill this one up or whatever. Oh, 
Okay. And there we are. Once we're happy, all our seams are good. For some reason that keeps stepping out that way. I don't know why. Maybe there's a bit of a bow in the barrel as it's bent. It doesn't appear to be. Jess is going to bark. She's looking out the window and growling. So we're going to brush some cement down here just to just to make sure we don't have any dry areas. That's really annoying when you're sanding a seam like this and then all of a sudden you find you've got a dry spot. Got to go back in and glue it and wait for the glue to dry and blah 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 blah. Okay, so there we go. That's the that's the first part dealt with. So we've got it all glued together. Another two to do, and we're away. Okay, so we're 24 hours later now, so the glue's nice and dry. Um, whenever you do anything like this, I would recommend leaving it as long as you can. So you know it's if you get one of these um, one of these turret kits, wherever it may be, make sure the first thing you do is glue the barrels together. Because if you can leave them for a week before you sand them, that's better than leaving them for the day. What you'll often find is you sand the seam back and it's all very nice and everything. And then you come back and look a week later and there's a line again. And what happens is the glue is basically, the cement you're using is basically a solvent. And what it's doing is it's melting the plastic together. It's kind of welding it together. Um, and the solvent has to evaporate. So obviously in 24 hours, most of it is gone. 99% of it is gone. But there's a little bit remaining. So if you're doing anything like this or an aircraft fuselage half, whatever, it's best to leave it as long as you possibly can before you start working on it. So... If you're doing, say, a 124th scale Spitfire, get your fuselage halves glued together, put them to one side, leave it there, get on with your wings. And then when your wings are done, then go back and do the fuselage. Don't mess around with doing seams straight away. If you do it too quickly, unless, of course, you've glued it together with super glue, but if you've used liquid cement, any of these or any of the Mr. Hobbies or whatever, then leave it as long as you can. But here we're going to do it for 24 hours just to show you the seam. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a magic marker or a Sharpie um, so you can see what I'm doing. Now, I wouldn't recommend doing this on your model because as I've shown and explained so many times before, what happens is if you get any of this pen left on your model, it will keep coming back through the paint. Go back and have a look at um, the, uh, the masking videos I did using the One Man Army masks and you'll see in there, I'm not sure which part it is, you see there, I, I put some numbers across the bottom of the um, across the bottom of the wing to mark which you know what was A B C D and E, and when I paid it, sprayed it in primer, it just kept coming back through. So uh, you you won't stop it coming through. So that's why I often say if you're going to like if you, for for using it for showing where you're standing or whatever, you're better off using pencil. The other thing I've done off camera right there. I've got in my spares box, I find this bomb, and this is a, a, a Revell bomb. And as you can see, it doesn't go together very well at all. It's actually lined up nicely at the nose, and it's lined up nicely on the tail. But in the middle, you can see we've got a massive step. And I'm going to show you, this is why we go to all the fuss of getting all the steps out and getting it right. So we've got that there. I'm going to use a hard stick. A lot of people will come in with a sponge and start sanding. Don't do that. Use a hard stick. The reason being is I don't have a piece of paper here. Find a piece of paper. Hang on. Right. This is a piece of paper that's cut the bottom of my bottom of my spray booth. Okay. So what you've got when you look at this end on, you have two halves like so. Okay, it goes round, you've got another join down here. I'm only going to concentrate on this. So you've got it glued together and you've got glue oozing out. Okay, so you've got glue oozing out inside and out. You've got glue oozing out there and oozing out there. So what you've got, if we blow this up here, what you've got 
is this. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Don't start. Grow up. Stop it. <laughs> what you've got is this. Okay. If you sand with a hard stick, because it's hard and it won't deflect, what it'll do, it'll shave the top of that off. Okay. If you use a sponge, so you've got this here. If you use a sponge, a sponge will deflect. So what it will do, the sponge will sand here, it will leave there, and then it will go up there, and then it will leave there, and then it will come down there. And what you will end up with, exaggerated, is this. Okay, what you'll do is you'll soften that ridge, and where, the, where it's digging in here, it'll sand, and exaggerated, that's what you'll end up with. Whereas with a hard stick, it will take the ridge off. By all means, polish with a sponge afterwards, but you want to start with a stick. So we can just see in there, I'm not sure if you can make it out or not, but we can just see we've got an area of raised glue. So I'm going to come along with my stick, and I'm not going to go, go standing, I'm just going to come along and just remove that raised ridge. So you can see there, I've come along, come in there, get into that corner, and just remove that raised ridge in there and then I'm going to get it 45 degrees what I'm doing is I'm turning the barrel as I'm sanding end on I'll show you what I'm doing exaggerated that's what I'm doing okay and we can see here that we have an edge Just going to sand until that edge is gone, and that's just where there's a very slight mismatch. Okay, and we come along, do the same on the other side. We've got a slight raised ridge, just get rid of it. This is why we spent all that time making sure the parts are done. Now, what we're going to do now is roll this around in your fingers, and it should feel cylindrical, it should feel the same as rolling that around in your fingers. If it's got flat spots on it, you'll feel it as bumps. Okay, so this one here, do some more sanding. And as you can see, we've got everything nicely sanded out pretty much. There we go. Now let's come along with the sponge. Just gently sand over that. This is a thousand grit sponge. And we can see that we have we have a line there where there's black ink. So rather than try and sand that out, if you try and sand that out, you'll end up with a flat spot. So what we've got here now, again exaggerated, we've got one half like this. We've got one half like this, okay, and what we've got is a slight undercut. So we're sanding here and here, but it's not sanding there. If we carry on, we'll end up with that, we'll end up with a flat spot. So what we're going to do now is stop. No more sanding. We can run it round in our fingers and we can feel it's nice and round. What I'm going to do is take some black super glue. Now I've got this one here is my favourite. This is VMS. VMS Flexi K Flexi 5K CA Black Thin. Now, what I am going to do is get my Tamiya cleaning brush. This is 74078. And the beauty of this, it's not only removes dust, but it's anti-static. Because I've been sanding, that will be full of static. And it, it take, when you use super glue, it tends to um pull the super glue off and make like, spider webs everywhere but it doesn't really matter because you just sand it away but uh, it's just best to try and avoid it right so you can see we've got some dots in here and we've got a bit of line going on there a bit of a line going on there Then on this side, this side's much better, it's uh, glued much better. Okay, so 
there we are. Now the other thing I always do now is on the ends where you can see the seam on the end, you see the join. I'm just going to put a drop on each side just to fill that up. And then we can leave that to dry, we can put some accelerator on there. Just leave it to dry and then we'll sand that out and it will be gone. And in true Blue Peter style, I can't put this down, let me grab a clothes peg. I if I could stand it in a clothes peg. I've just touched the super glue, that's all right. Here we go, we can stand it. Oops. Here's one I've done earlier, and as you can see, got a bit of super glue up here, but all down on the main barrel, it's absolutely fine. I can run that around on my fingers and I can feel there's a bit of something going on. So I'm going to come in at 45 degrees with my 400 grit hard sanding stick. just sand those out. As you can see I'm turning the barrel while I'm sanding it. That's better. Then we can polish it with a sponge. Always going at about 45 degrees. There we are. Right, so there we are. I can see there. Okay, this is what you're looking for. I'm not sure you're going to be able to pick that out, but I can see there. Where's my pointer? If you look right where the end of this pointer is, you may be able to see it or not. There's a shiny area, and that's where the super glue has gone into the joint and it's not sanded. So if you see anything shiny, There's a tiny bit there as well. That's where the super glue hasn't sanded out. So the super glue, as you can see, the super glue when it dries, it's shiny. So if when you sand it, you see shiny bits, it means it hasn't sanded. So therefore you will see a line in your paint. Now these tiny, tiny little areas we're talking about are going to be covered with primer. But um, we do another one now without marking it out, because you know what I'm doing. I'm just... Removing the glue line, okay, just like so. so. That's the first job is to remove that raised ridge, and then we're just gonna sad that out just like so. I can see here I've got an area which is shiny there, got an area which is shiny there, and there's something going on down here as well. And then over the other side, a shininess there, see little bits of shininess down here, there, and down on the end of there. So we will wait for that to dry or put some kicker on it, whatever, and then we'll come back and we'll do some more sanding. I haven't done this end just because I want to hold it there for, for the intents of this, for the purposes of making this video. Okay, I found another part I can show you how to do it wrong. So what I'm going to do is use Tamiya quick setting and hopefully it will cure quickly. We're going to glue that tail end together there. Okay, so that's the back end done. And what I'm going to do is on the front, I'm going to purposely, you can see if we made a lot of fuss and got it all nice, it would all blend in lovely. Okay, so I'm going to put some extra thin in there. Put some in there. like so. Now imagine this is a barrel, not a not a bomb. I don't want to waste a good barrel, that's the problem. So we've got that there. Okay, so that is nicely all lined up. We can grab our tweezers, come in, make sure it's all nice and level, front's coming apart. we 
there we go. So we've got it all nice and level, all ready to sand nice and smooth. What I'm going to do is give it a kick. Okay, so that is now that is now a misaligned part. So if you remember, I said about rubbing your fingernail across. There's a great big edge that way, but that way there's nothing. And you can see we've got quite a substantial step in there on both sides. Okay, so we'll let that dry for a minute and then I'm going to sand that out. And I'll show you the common mistake that people make. Which I tried to show you just now, but it didn't work out. There's a surprise. Right, so let that dry and then I'll show you what happens. So, black pen just to show you what I'm doing. So we've got the black pen along the seam, got the black pen along the top. So now, I'm going to come along and I'm going to sand and I can see, oh dear, it's only taking the pen off of this side. It's not taking it off of this side. So I've got two choices. I can fill this, make it round, or I can just sand it out. So I'll just sand it out. Great, because we get this is what we're doing. We're getting rid of that seam. That's what we want to do. Get rid of that step. Make our tube look a lot better, or our barrel, whatever. And as you can see on there, we have a flat spot. And I'll do the same on this side to get rid of that seam. And we'll see now what the difference is. That's 12.23 and that's 12. So you can see we've got a pretty oval shape. And when you run it around in your fingers, you will feel it. It's going, it's almost like a cam rather than a than a cylinder. We do the same on the front. You can see we've got this misalignment on the front, so we'll have to sand that out. And then, of course, you notice that you've done that and you think, oh, Christ, what am I going to do? What I'll do is I'll come along and I'll, sh I'll file away, I'll sand away around the edges and make it round again. And it just, it just makes things worse. So the best thing to do is when you put things together, is take your time and get them like this. Don't glue them together like that. And I think that's what people are scared of when it comes to um, barrels and stuff. You can see here this one where I put the super glue in. We had a tiny little shiny area. Let's clean off my sanding stick. 45 degrees, turn both. Same here, there's a little pip in there. And then just polish it. We can turn it, we can feel it, we can measure it, we can check with our, with our digital caliper. It's difficult to do on it because it's tapered, but you get the idea. And uh, there we are. So happy with how that's come out. So what we'll do now is we'll leave that for at least a week and then give it a good coat of primer and check all our seams and everything and there we are but of course on this one we don't really need to do this because we have the aluminium barrels with the kit but uh, like with the Iowa uh, or sorry the um, what's it called Missouri we don't have that option and I think the only one that comes with aluminium barrels is actually uh, the Scharnhorst so there we go that's a, that's one done Two to go. All right, so a few hours later now, they've dried. Um, not quite sure why I put that one in a peg, but never mind. Um, so we've got, you can see here, we've got the super glue down there. We've still got the black pen. 
So again, we're going to take our 400 grit hard stick, remember not a sponge, and then just doing this. The correct way to file a something round is like this, okay? You often see people doing this, just to show it end, you often see people doing this, yeah? The correct way, sorry, the correct way is this. Okay, that's, that's what I was taught at Rolls-Royce in my apprenticeship. So what I'm doing here is staying at an angle, just staying flat and just turning the barrel as I go. So I know that I'm sanding. I'm not going to put a flat because you've got this raised lump of super glue and you don't just want to file it flat. You want it to be, you want it to take the form of the... Um, of the barrel and the beauty of this stuff this VMS black super glue or black thin is that it's quite soft as we all know super glue is generally like absolutely rock hard and when you do try and sand it on a seam you sometimes especially with a sponge you end up with a raised lump of super glue in the middle and a, um, a depression either side and you can see we've got a tiny little step there you can see that when I'm sanding it it's not touching the right hand side, it's only touching the left. So I'm just going to come in and just literally just gently roll that around. Okay, so I can run that around in my fingers and I can feel that I haven't got any flats on there. It looks nice and smooth. And what we'll do in a minute, we'll get a coat, coat of primer on there. And a coat of primer will really show up any issues that we've got. So and we'll use grey primer, not black. Um, black primer is great as a guide, like you can see here. I've used the black primer over the grey primer so I can see where the high spots are when I sand it. But to actually highlight gaps, lines, seams or whatever, grey primer is the best. As you can see still, I can't obviously go on an angle when I'm up to that shoulder. But just taking out any line that's there. There we go. And it looks like we're pretty much there. I can feel that in my fingers. It's all still nice and round. I'll come along now with a thousand grit sponge. Just polish where I've been sanding, take out any marks or anything. Remove some of that excess pen. That is a pain in the ass if it cuts starts coming through your primer. And there we go, that's the actual forward section of the barrel done. There is no more work to do on that. Just the end. So as I, as I showed you earlier, I think, come along. Keep turning the barrel as you sand it, otherwise you'll end up sanding a wedge onto it. Okay, so that's the front flattened out. Just clean that out with a sponge, take any sharp edges away. And then with this burr, as I showed you earlier, backwards, rather than try and cut into it, just go backwards. Okay, and that just cleans up the edge. And then when you look in there, you can see you've got a tapered hole and you can actually see that it's reducing inside. So I'm going to come in with this three millimeter burr and just cut out the beauty of these burrs is rather than using a drill, you can see there it's gone in, they don't kind of, like a drill wants to drill its way in, it wants to screw itself in, it will cut its way in. That will sometimes split the plastic open, whereas a burr is kind of, it, it's, it's, um, it's kind of rubbing away at the surface rather than trying to pull its way in. So it's like a, it's like the difference of a, of, of that and a wedge, if you like. So it's just putting the forward pressure out rather than trying to split it open. Obviously, if it's really weak, it will split it open. But there we go. That's that done. Okay. So, as I say, just keep testing it in your fingers. If it's got flat spots, you'll feel it. Now, this one up here, we're back to square one. So, again, magic marker. I'm not going to go as mad as I did before. A magic marker over that seam 
and then once again just gently sand and this is actually called a zebra stick it's from Infini you can get them from premium hobbies and they're absolutely brilliant they're quite hard There we go, you can see that that is, is lovely. Feels nice and round, so I'll come with the sponge. And I can see once again we've got a thin black line there, which probably means there is a seam there. We'll also do this bit here that fits up into the up into the blast bag. Yeah, I can feel something there. So I'm going to clean the other one up the same. Okay, and then I'll come back. I'm going to clean the other one up the same. Get some super glue on the on the on these. Clean them up, and then I'll come back and we'll get some. Right, so we've got them all primed. What I've done here, I've drilled a hole in the back of each barrel, and these are actually if you go to KFC and you get the um, the, the cord on the cob, which is bloody lovely. These are the skewers you get, so always worth keeping them. They're brilliant for holding parts for modelling. But um, as you can see here, the thing you need to do is say to yourself, where is the seam? And if you can't see where that seam is, then you've done a good job. So there we go. Now something's happened here that I couldn't have planned for, and I'm so glad it has. Remember I, I put the black magic marker over the seam and then I sanded it? Well, there was obviously some areas that the black magic marker is there and I've sanded away. And you can see the black magic marker coming from the seam. So that is that that is definitely, that shows there is an undercut in there. Um, and the black pen is soaked into the joint. And then when I've sprayed it, it's almost like um, doing non-destructive testing, NDT. So what's happened is the ink has come back through up through the paint and shown me where there is a seam issue. So what I need to do now is sand that away so that I go through back to the plastic, fill those areas with super glue again to sort of seal them in and then do it all again. Because you can see we've got the same on this side here. Whereas on the other two, we have no problem whatsoever. That was come loose on there. We have no problem whatsoever. So basically now they are ready to, I'm going to leave them for like, I don't know, until I need them. Well, I'm, going to, I'm going to use the aluminium barrels anyway, but um, I'm going to leave these for as long as I can because what I might do, as I was saying when I reviewed the kit, you get the choice of having the barrels sort of up at 45 degrees or down flat. So looking at it from the side, they're like this or they're up like that. Um, and because here we've got six barrels, we could probably glue these into the blast bags and see how well the blast bags fit and then have the option of displaying it in two different ways. But um, I can just make out there, I don't know if you can see it, but I have got a very slight flat spot here. I doubt you're going to see it on the camera, but it's there. And that's the good thing about putting grey primer on it, it will show up everything. But they are perfectly good enough, I mean if it wasn't for that black pen, they are perfectly good enough to go ahead and use. So what I'm going to do is with a thousand grit sponge, I'm going to sand away the primer and we can see here where we've got the the super glue in the seam so what I'm going to have to do just to make sure I'm going to have to super glue the whole seam so what I'm going to do is remove all the primer from this area okay I'm using a sponge because I'm not trying to remove an, an edge or anything, I'm just trying to remove the paint. So I don't want to put the, the super glue on top of the Mr. Surfacer primer. So I'm just trying to expose, and we've got some pen showing through there as well, so we'll remove that. Okay, so now I can see the seam, and I can fill the whole seam cover up the whole seam with this. It's very difficult to see the seam actually. I can basically go over the whole seam with the super glue 
and then sand it all back and that should seal in any ink that's in there. So um, yeah, I'm really glad that's happened because to try and plan for that would be a nightmare. So um, there we go. So I've just got to do the same thing over again and sand it back. But as you can see, this is what this whole video was about. As I've called it, the tale of two halves. It's bringing two halves together and making them seamless. And as you can see from what I've done, it's not very difficult. It's just, it's all about taking your time, a bit of preparation, and just, you know, making sure that when you glue it together, it's like that. It's not like that. It's not like that. It's like that. Okay. So thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time for another video. And um, I'm going to go on and get this done now and then I'll get them primed again and then leave them alone and see if the seams come back. So there we go. Put that back in there. I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.